Week 8, Problem 10. The figure below shows a top view of a bar that can slide on two frictionless rails. The resistor is 5 ohms <coughs> and a 2.5 Tesla magnet. That's a big magnetic field. 2.5 um, Tesla magnetic field is directed perpendicularly downward into the page at L equal 1.2 meters. Calculate the applied force required to move the bar to the right at a constant speed of 2 meters per second. Hmm, pretty sure this is like a rail gun. Let me look this guy up real quick. Rail gun. Ba bam Nope. Real guns are different. Slightly different. Similar concept, but slightly different. I gotta say it's the same. Calculate the... Eh. I gotta say it's mostly the same. Alright. So, I'm gonna start this guy off with Lenz's Law. Hop. So, hop. Ooh, magenta. Negative, deflux dt equals negative db dot a dt and then we do the whole product rule I'm going to draw this part nice so I can use it later there we go outstanding all right, calculate the force applied. Move the bar, okay. So the idea here is we have a constant magnetic field. The constant magnetic field is gonna, ooh, teal. It's gonna mean that dB dt equals zero. So this portion right here is zero. Now we have an area that's changing. So what we're, I'm gonna rewrite area this is probably more than you guys care about, but I'm still going to do it anyway. I'm going to call area length times width, and then do and do the pro product rule one more time. So we're going to get is dl dt times width plus d width dt times length. Well, let's see here. I'm going to call this the length, and this guy right here the width. So the width is changing with respect to time because it's moving along. But the length is the same. So this guy's going to be 0. So this is going to be L dW dt. And this right here is going to be the velocity that, that the bar is moving at. The velocity is moving, or the bar is moving at a velocity, which is a change in width with respect to time. So I'm going to rewrite this portion in here as L V, I'm going to put a little vector up here, just so it's obviously, um, just so it's obviously a velocity and not a voltage, times B. Yeah, it looks good. And that equals, and I probably should have a little negative there, just in case. Yeah. All right. So now... This is going to, hmm. now the way, this comes up a lot. Um, and the acronym that we use in the Navy for this is Everybody Loves Velvet Bunnies. I love velvet, I love bunnies, everybody loves velvet bunnies, E-L-V-B. And this is how you know the induced EMF due to a, um, uh, a sliding rod, basically. Okay. So now we got that part, but now we need the force. This goes to our other acronym. Fire incinerates little bunnies. Right? So I'm going to go here. So we know that fire incinerates little bunnies. Cross product, so we know it's going to be biggest when the two, oppose two are in opposite directions, which they are. So magnetic field is perpendicular to the bar. So this is going to be I, L, B. But we don't know what I is. Okay, so we know we know we know there has to be an 
current though because we have a voltage difference. We have a voltage difference, we have a resistance, so we're going to have a um, current. So we know V, which is the same as E, equals IR. V equals IR, Ohm's law, right? So then I equals epsilon over R. And we know what epsilon is over here. So I'm going to rewrite this again. So we have everybody loves velvet bunnies times L times B over R. Okay. So then we have and go to that. That's not supposed to be there. Loves velvet bunnies. So this will be the same as V, velocity of the bar, times L squared times magnetic field squared over R. And we know that force equals that. Bam! Looks like I did a whole bunch of stuff. And that if uh, yeah, I guess so. But it actually flows pretty naturally. These are all common equations that we've used a bunch of times, and now this is just the one instance we put it all together. Um, this is a fairly common type problem, so it might be worth your time going through it a couple times, just to make sure you understand it. All right, so calculate the force applied, two meters per second. So now we're just going to plug stuff in. So here, this is going to be oh, two meters per second, check, L, 1.2, 1.2 squared, magnetic field is 2.5, so we'll have 2.5 squared. Make a better squared. And then we have R, which is 5. Hmm. I could probably simplify this a little bit. So 2 times 2.5 is 5. So I'm going to do 1.2 squared times 2.5. Everything else cancels out. Cancel out one of the 0.25s. Yeah, see that? See that? Pretty clever. Pretty clever. And this is going to be 1.2 squared times 2.5. 1.2 is 3.6. Hmm, that's surprisingly odd. 3.6. Or surprisingly even. There we go. 3.6 newtons. All right, so now let's make sure they said to the right there, so I want to make sure they weren't trying to trick us into um, getting a negative there. So let's see here. So for the induced electromagnetic, uh, the induced EMF, it would be negative LVB. So I'm going to say V is positive to the right. Okay. L is always going to be positive and B is staying the same. Positive. B is positive. So, hmm. So we're going to get a negative EMF, which means we're going to create a magnetic field going out of the page like this. Okay, so I think the current then would be going this direction and then up this direction. So the it's going to create a magnetic. Uh, it's going to create a current that opposes the magnetic field. All right, like this again. So positive number, positive number. Positive times negative is a negative, so it's going to oppose the current magnetic field. Okay, check. Mm, maybe. Seems reasonable enough. At what rate is energy delivered to the resistor? Okay. So, oh, okay. So for this, see energy so that's going to be power so that's looking for joules per second so we see here rate and we see energy so that's joules per second which implies power 
So for power, we think of I squared R, or, yeah, we can do that. We can do I squared R, because that's the standard form of delivering power to a resistor. That's heat loss due to a resistor. So that's going to be, if we look up here, I R, epsilon over R, Epsilon squared over R squared. Okay. Times R. Which will be Epsilon squared over R. Alright, so then we know Epsilon is LVB. Okay. So it's going to be L squared V squared B squared over R. Okay, I'll believe that. So this is going to be, look at all our numbers again, length 1.2, so we have 1.2 squared, 1.2 squared, velocity, which is 2 squared, magnetic field, which is 2.5 squared, over resistor, which is 5, I'm going to do the trick again by getting rid of 2 squared times 2 times 2.5. Then I'm going to get 1.2 squared times 5. And then 2 squared times 5. 7.2. Seven point two watts. Okay. Now there probably is another way to do this. So you could probably also do this by work equals force times distance. Therefore, work per second equals force times distance per second, which equals force times velocity which equals 3.6 times 2, which gives us the same answer we had before, which is 7.2. Bam! So yes, I am mostly, mostly confident that this is correct. All right? So the way you work through this one, so they ask you a sliding bar, you see a magnetic field, you see a current, you see an area. The first thought is Lenz's law. All right, so Lenz's law. Uh, the voltage, EMF, equals negative deflux dt. And you expand that out all the way. You even you even take your area and you divide that into lengths and widths. The change in width with respect to time is a um, velocity. You take your velocity. And you're like, all right, so now I got all this stuff. What do I do with this? It's like, well, they ask for a force. What do you know about force in life? Well, you have memorized fire incinerates little bunnies. You write that out. So you have fire incinerates little bunnies. F equals I L cross B. Okay, then you have, then you take what you have from Lenz's law and you use Ohm's law to convert your voltage into a current. You have your current, you then take your current, plug that in, and bam, you end up with a force. In this case, your force is 3.6 newtons. They then ask you, all right, what rate is energy delivered to the resistor? You can either go back and figure out the current again and then do I squared R which ended up being v squared over r for us because that's just how it progressed. Or you could do work equals force times distance, divide both sides by time, bam, and you have power equals force times velocity. So, and that's how you do this problem. So, pretty good problem, work through it, make sure you understand it, make sure you understand um, which equations to throw in and kind of how to go through it. All right, sounds good. See you on problem 11.